In this video, we'll talk about CPU architecture. In particular, we'll analyze the Scott CPU. We'll see the main components of a CPU and how they interact with each other in order to execute instructions. Here, you'll get a high-level view of a CPU, and in the next videos, we are going to see each component in great detail. This is our CPU example. It's taken from a fantastic book which really can make you understand how computers work. The title is uh, But How Do It Know? by J. Clerk Scott. This CPU doesn't exist, but it's perfect for educational purpose and for understanding the inner working of this component. Most computers today have a von Neumann architecture. This architecture, designed for general purpose machine, is composed by an arithmetic and logic unit, which provides for all the calculations, a control unit, and a memory unit. The memory unit memorizes both the programs, which contain the instructions and the data, which are the product of the instruction executions. The control unit has to manage and coordinate the ALU and the memory operations. ALU and control unit compose the central processing unit, or CPU for short. Scott's CPU is a 8-bit CPU, so all the buses have 8 wires. Registers and RAM have 8 bits word. You can see here all the elements of von Neumann architecture. On the right, we have the RAM we discussed in the previous videos. On the left, the ALU which executes arithmetic and logic instructions, and in the center, the control unit from which most control signals start. You can see all the set and enable wires starting from it. We have some registers. For example, register from R0 to R3. These are controlled by the control unit and connected to the bus to receive a byte from the RAM and to put a byte on the bus for sending it elsewhere. There is register TMP. TMP is for temporary, and it sends a byte to input B of the ALU. We need it in order to free the bus, which must also receive the other input of the ALU, input A. The ALU performs a calculation from input A and the input B, and it puts the result in the accumulator registers. From the accumulator, the result can be stored in another register or directly in the RAM memory. We have other two registers, and these ones are special registers because of their functions. IAR is for Instruction Address Register and contains the address of the next instruction. And IR is the instruction register and contains the instruction we want to execute. We leave out for the moment the logic between ALU and control section. We are going to cover it in next videos. In order to run programs, the CPU must be able to read and execute instructions. The program instructions in the form of zeros and ones are memorized at the beginning of the RAM memory in order to avoid overwrites. The rest of the memory is for the data. Let's see how CPU operates in order to execute instructions. First, we have to fetch the first instruction in the instruction register. Second, we have to decode the instruction in order to understand what it allows us to do. For this reason, every bit of the instruction word has a meaning for the control unit. In this case, the instruction says to add R2 content to R3 content. Then, control unit sets the add operation to the ALU. In the third phase, the ALU executes the SUM operation and put the result in the accumulator, and from there in other registers, or in the RAM memory. 
In the meantime, Control Unit and ALU cooperate in order to update the instruction address register. Summing 1 to IAR content, we have next instruction address. So this time the second instruction is fetched in the instruction register and so on. This is a clearly a cycle that repeats itself over and over again. It's called instruction cycle or fetch decode execute cycle. Note that all bytes are moved through the bus, no matter whether they are related to addresses or instructions or result from the ALU. For this reason, inside the control unit, there must be something to synchronize all movements. This something is the clock. So we figure out that all the CPU does is the fetch decode execute cycle. But what can CPU do within this cycle? To understand this, we have to go deeper inside the ALU and the control unit. First, the ALU. In the next video, we'll see one important component of the ALU, the adder. Please leave me a comment and let me know if you liked this video. Make sure you put the thumb up, click the notification bell and subscribe to my channel.